Cheers, Chris, for speaking to us at Sovereign Online. You're welcome. Um, could you tell us what are your first views of Eccles Library? Are you impressed with it? Or? I moved into Eccles in 1998, uh, but I was at Eccles College as well from for a year. Mm. I used the library then. And then when I moved back in in 98, I started to use the library. Mm. Uh, and I think this, the fact that they've retained the original building but also modernised is great. Mm. Um, I'm very impressed with it. I know that you grew up in Salford. Was it Liverpool Street originally? Then was it no, I was Little born Lundin? at home. Right, let's get that one. Fifty nine Bloodwell Street, yeah. which was knocked down about four years ago. Right. Because my brothers were born in hospital, they're twins. Your third child or your second child, which technically I was because the twins were born together, mm. you were allowed to be born at home. So mm. I was born at home, Fifty Nine Bloodwell Street. Did you use the public libraries growing up? In that area, too, Seven right? months of age, I was moved out. We moved out to Little Alton, mm -hmm. and uh, I used Little Alton Library, which is a tiny library, but I think in many ways it saved my life. That library, mm. yeah. because at at, um, at school I was branded a remedial reader, along with six other children. And uh, what happened was when when the um, when the class were doing group reading, we were marched out which was quite humiliating, mm. but those were the ways of the time, you know. But fortunately, because of a teacher called Mrs Hayes, um, who threw away the... What school was this, Chris? This was at Bridgewater mm. pri County Primary School on mm. Bridgeyard Street, next to St Eddie's, the Catholic uh, primary school. Uh, um, she, we, we used to be taught on these books called Janet and John Readers, mm. and mm. They, they made no... They had no, made no sense to me because they were obviously about a middle class, yeah. <laughs> idyllic childhood. Can't relate well, to we that weren't living really. a bad childhood, but it was yeah. very different. But this teacher gave me Dr. Zeus, which was mm. American kind of progressive children's books, very surreal, very imaginative. And also, she gave us special attention. Right. And we weren't stupid kids, we were just slightly different, we worked in different ways. And by the time I left that school, due to her, due to my parents and due to using my local library. At 11 years of age, I had a reading age of 19. Right. And I became an actor, and the tools of my trade are words. So you think the libraries was a, a springboard, a stepping the library, stone? The libraries did, obviously. When I walked into them libraries, what I got was access to books. But also, um, it was a library in the middle of a council estate, and what I saw was I saw people from my community in there and I realised that they had interests and passions, you know. And so it gave me a sense of community as well. Uh, mm. And that people from our background were just as entitled and just as able to be knowledgeable. Mm. I thought the atmosphere, I, you know, the quiet place, the whole mm. culture or, or atmosphere in a library was intriguing to me as mm. a kid. Would you, oh, well, it's a bit of an obvious question, would you recommend the libraries to children today? Would you, yeah. You, we've got all the oh, PlayStations, they've got the Nintendos. I, yeah. I, personally, I can't think of anything better than the libraries, but do you think children... I can't think of anything better than the libraries for two mm. reasons, you know. Um, to a certain extent, PlayStations and this, that and the other, mm. uh, you're not using your imagination, but if you're reading a book, you use your imagination. Mm -hmm. Also, the th as I've said, the thing about a library is you go there and there are other people there. You, it's not just you mm -hmm. and a television screen. So it's a social thing mm -hmm. as well, and it teaches responsibility, you know. Mm -hmm. I was late with my library books and I got a fine. So, <laughs> But that whole yeah. thing and the idea that the books are not just yours, it's not about you having a possession, it's about you sharing yeah. these books with other people and have a responsibility to other people. I mean, for me to be asked, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm asked to open various things. I was asked to open something at Hope Hospital, and I was very proud to do it. But to be asked to open a library, I, I can't think of anything better, mm. really. Following the footsteps of Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie, who's been in this actual building. Yeah. Amazing stories. <laughs> Amazing. It just shows what we've got in our doorsteps. And yeah, yeah. I won't call the Manic Street pictures about libraries gave us power, but it, yeah. it's a ring of truth to it. Yeah. Chris, honestly, that's been marvellous. Thanks for your time. Thanks very much. Thank you.